Partner, uh, Your Excellencies, Honorable Rectors and uh, Presidents of Universities and uh, dear friends and colleagues. It's a great, uh, great pleasure and even more so a honor for me to be able to address you on the occasion of the opening of this uh, second uh, summit. Summit meetings have become a well-known feature of international relations and uh, at the time now we are meeting there's another major summit going on, the G7 summit uh, at Castle Elmau in, uh, in, in Germany. I think uh, uh, the heads of state and government are meeting at the moment at the Castle Elmau didn't have to change the venue at the last minute. And uh, we also do not have the privilege of having uh, the highest level of uh, government represented uh, today and tomorrow amongst us. But I think we nevertheless have um, some crucial advantages to make this summit a success. The first advantage I think we have is that we share uh, well-defined common objectives. Uh, ultimately, what you need to make a summit a success is in the first place, common objectives. And the objectives of the summit have already been carefully prepared. Um, in the last occasion, the meeting, uh, the preparatory seminar at Guadalajara in November 2014. The primary objective being to make progress with the establishment of the common um, uh, Latin American, Caribbean, and European Union space for higher education, science, and innovation. Um, this several objective, I think, is complemented and further defined by the uh, idea to achieve concrete progress towards uh, the integration of our higher education systems. Second, by promoting innovation through the integration of uh, re our research systems. Third, by, the, by strengthening the interaction between our institutions, our universities and research centers with the socio-economic environment in our respective regions and countries. And fourth, by linking our institutions, the input we can make better with uh, policy making at the national level and also the uh, regional level. These are certainly very ambitious uh, objectives, but they address, I think, real needs of our regions, countries, citizens, and economies. They could, therefore, I think, be hardly more legitimate. I would even say they can hardly be more necessary for the future of not only relations between our regions and our countries, but also for the future of our um, citizens, and in particular also, let's not forget, our students who represent an, a central part of this future. There is so much, I think, in this process of meeting these objectives which we can learn from each other. In Central America and Latin America, in the European Union, there is an amazing wealth of experience, of academic experience. We can identify best practices. We can aim at transferring them. We can aim at strengthening the potential on the basis of best practices which have been transferred of mutual recognition of what we are doing. So there is huge scope, practical scope here to make a, a progress. But the second reason why I'm very optimistic that this summit can make uh, further progress is because of you, participants, because of the expertise you bring from the different regions to our proceedings today and uh, to, uh, tomorrow. Having the right objectives is, as I said already, certainly very important, but ultimately, uh, to quote uh, uh, Jean Monnet, rien n'est possible sans les hommes. Nothing is possible without people. And you represent the real potential for progress today and tomorrow by bringing fully in your expertise and by representing uh, your institutions. 
I therefore think that we can make uh, together very substantial uh, uh, progress in furthering the creation of this space, in setting more precise goalposts, and actually addressing at the end, hopefully, a forceful message to the political uh, level.